As you begin wrapping up your visual analysis, you'll need to start considering the user experience. Will your audience be able to use your visual analysis? Will they be able to find insights easily and clearly? This video goes over some best practices. These concepts fit into the last building block on packaging up your final analysis. And when you're designing this user experience, there are some key design aspects to keep in mind. One is that intuitiveness is familiarity. If you wanna create an intuitive interface, try to use design aspects that people are already familiar with. We'll go over some examples in this video. The other idea is that less is more. You wanna be very judicious with what you're showing so that you don't overcrowd the visualization and that you can be very clear with what the data is communicating. And this is related to the data to ink ratio coined by Edward Tufte, where you really wanna emphasize the visual aspects of the data and try not to, again, crowd the visualization with things that can be distracting. So let's start with an example on heart disease. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is that people will scan this page like they would with a book, which means that they'll generally go from top to bottom and left to right. Now, the eye tracking studies have shown that people will actually look at these with a little bit of an F pattern. So you wanna have your key information towards the top, things such as your title and some of your key charts. And you wanna have some of your more granular information down towards the bottom right, if possible. Now, the other aspect to show is the coloring here. There's consistent coloring across this. I haven't overused coloring. I've only used colors where they add value. So here um, we have patients that have heart disease are in this red color. And you can see that clearly without re even really having uh, much of a legend elsewhere on this page, you can already associate that um, the heart disease is present and that's red here on this chart as well as this chart. Now the shapes here are also, uh, are also formatted appropriately where the circles match for patients that do not have heart disease and the X's match for patients that do have heart disease. So those are colored and shaped similarly. Now here on blood pressure, we're starting to see that as blood pressure rises, this goes towards warmer colors indicating a little bit of an alarm. And here we have simple icons to show if tobacco usage is high or low or medium. Now, over here, with our going back to our charts and our styling, we formed our interactivity in a way that drills across and down. So when I select different values here, you'll see it filtering across all of these charts, right? So this is the first chart that people might select. I've also used this shadow feature. So in bar charts, you can actually go into appearance and you can show shadows indicating unfiltered data. So the total distribution is a shadow and then the selected data is down here. Now over here on the right, we see that this is for overweight patients that have heart disease. It's all colored this, uh, similarly. And this line that's the best fit is colored the same way. And I use a label on the line and that way I reduce the space by not needing a legend. Now, since there's so many points over here, I actually used um, hollow circles so that you could see where they were overlapped and you can see clusters of information. Now on this next page, we're gonna show, um, this is some similar data. And I wanted to point out that I used a, a property control here with a dropdown, but I formatted this similar to a title. So this looks like it's just a title, but this is actually a text area with a property control formatted with a size and font like a title. So this is a simple way for them to just grab the uh, information they want and select data right from the title for their parameterized uh, dashboard. Now next I wanna point out this map chart and I've used a very subtle gray background. And that's because my data is not highly geographic, meaning I don't care about things like where rivers and roads are or what the terrain's like. I just want some reference information, some light reference information, and that allows me to better emphasize the points that I want my user to look at. Now over here I have this bar chart and this is sorted by value. And that's because this is a variable importance bar chart and I want my most important variables to be at the top. So this allows, that sorting allows those to be at the top and by arranging this horizontally, I can better read the axis labels. Now next I have these colors. I've used these across my entire dashboard. Why did I choose these colors? Well, I recommend going to Adobe Color Wheel. You can go to color.adobe.com and you can create all kinds of custom uh, uh, color themes right here, right in the color wheel, or you can go to explore and this is something I use often. I can just type in something like heart disease 
and I get lots of examples with stock imagery and it's extracted a kind of a color theme out of it. And for this visual analysis, I use this color theme. So a quick tip on this is you can actually use the eyedropper tool anywhere on your screen and you can use that to grab the colors from uh, the Adobe Color Wheel or wherever else you'd like and to start building your color theme. Now here I have some New York demographic statistics, and this is for looking at where I might want to place a high-end retail fashion store. And here I've chosen to put my text area at the top left, and this is because the user's eyes will go there, and this is where they can find more information if they want to know what this page is about and how they should use it. I've also put my controls here for easy access, so if they wanted, for instance, to change the map coordinates, they know that they can put it in here because that's in the instructions and now they can change the coordinates for that new store. They also have these selections for changing the parameterization and the, the controls from the document properties on how the whole page is, uh, is controlled and what visuals it's shown. So that's allowed me to use less charts on this page by giving them the option right here. Now here I've only used one color and I think people often try to use too much color. I could have used something like maybe the value axis values here and maybe in my properties. I could have made this from my other charts, um, let's say uh, from my map chart. And you can see like now this might look prettier because it matches the other colors, but this is actually very confusing because this shows Bronx being in light green and that's not actually true because not all of these values that are light green are in the Bronx. These are actually the lower values for income, um, the blue values being the higher values for income, and that's distributed all over the area. So these kind of colors can actually be confusing and I think it's better not to have any colors there at all. And I've used here, again, hollow circles so that when the user selects through these, they can see the different distributions of the data better. Now here I have this analysis on Roger Craig. He's a pro bowl running back that works for TIPCO. He's our VP of business development. And he was running for the Hall of Fame and we did analysis on some of his stats. So I have this nice cover page and I have a button here that will take me to the next page. And here I have a couple scatter plot charts. So again, to emphasize that I didn't want to crowd my data with too much color, I actually used white on white here in the background so that I could see all the other running backs, halfbacks, and fullbacks all over here without it being too crowded. I could then emphasize on a secondary level the uh, Hall of Fame uh, players, and then I have Roger here, which I have laser focused on by putting some light reference lines and using the lines and curves feature. I've also used an annotation feature, which can go to vis uh, visualizations and annotation, and this explains a little bit about the chart right on the chart. On the key metrics page, this shows uh, different stats for Roger and other running backs, and I want to compare Roger against other Hall of Famers. So I've created some bookmarks here and I've put it right into my text area where you can hit this and you can see Roger all highlighted across all of my visualizations all marked there. And then I can hit Hall of Famers and you can see all of the Hall of Famers marked. So this allows the user to make the comparison that I want them to make and tells a story that I'm trying to tell. Now the next thing to consider is that your user may not be on the same size screen as you. And so you can simulate that by going to File and Document Properties and you have some things like iPad landscape, which I can hit, and I can see the iPad resolution. You'll see that this has all been jumbled up. I can't read this anymore. Uh, these are all too tight, too close together. Um, I can put some custom sizes in here if I want for custom resolutions on different screen sizes. But the point is this is all kind of jumbled up. So what I want to do is actually lock the visualization area. So I can go to Arrange Visualizations and lock the visualization area. I don't want the text areas to change. That's something to keep in mind and I locked these to the left and this to the top. And now when I go to file and uh, I go to make this a iPad landscape, you'll see that this all stays the same. Now some of these are still jumbled up. So the other thing I can do is for all the charts, I can actually for each page, I can set a page layout option. And a page layout option will allow me to use a mobile layout. So if someone's on a mobile device, it can stack it in a different way. And that's when the width is less than a certain number of pixels. And I can just use even for a desktop, a fixed page size. When let's say the width is less than, I'll just give this 1800 and a height less than, let's say uh, 1080. Now when I hit close, you'll see that these scroll bars have come in because this height is not 
is this height is actually less than 1080 and so now the visualizations don't get crunched in instead you get a scroll page for your entire page now on the text areas you might want to consider turning off the title bars just to make it a little more clean as well there and now returning back to my New York City store analysis, I've built this as a guided walkthrough. So I've removed all the controls here and at the bottom you can see that you have page navigation options for making this a step-by-step -step where you can have these step-by-step uh, -step options for each page. You can also make this history arrows which makes this kind of like a web browser where you can go back and forth based on the, the history of the pages that people are going to. And you can also, starting in Spotfire 10.7, you can turn these off completely. So here I've actually used bookmarks to create this walkthrough and this could replace any kind of like PowerPoint presentation. So you could hit, hit next here and here I've focused on the areas that are most wealthy in this New York City region. I wanna point out that it's important to make sure that your tool tips give the information that you want it to. Make sure that you, you take care of your tool tips when you finalize your analysis. But here we're looking at regions that are over 120,000 where income's over 120,000. I can hit next here and now I see that my company doesn't have a store in the Brooklyn area and an intersection between the wealthier areas and Brooklyn is right here and that's where we're proposing to use the new store, to place a new store. And I've used annotations to kind of guide the narrative along the way. Another layout design for a dashboard is you can turn off that bottom page navigation and you can make links here so what I've done is this is just a text area and in the text area I put a background image and then I created some links with some action controls. And here you can go and now I can actually navigate to different pages and I can return. I can go back to you know different metrics on this, this whole analysis. And this creates an application type experience where you can actually create portals and sub portals. It's really helpful if you have tons of pages in your visual analysis.